This is Rob Finfrock for Aero TV at Sebring 2009, and behind us is a rather innovative aircraft. That's a, even a bit of an understatement. The Electrifier C, and we are here with the president of Electric Aircraft Corporation, Randall Fishman. Randall, thank you for talking with Aero TV today about this wonderful aircraft behind us. Most will recognize this aircraft when it made its public introduction at AirVenture last year. It was uh, a Moni motor glider that I had. And uh, last year I converted it over to electric. Uh, we had done the uh, electric uh, ultralight, electric trike before, and then we decided to convert this because uh, I wasn't happy with it as gasoline powered. Now, obviously, the transition from gasoline to electric power presents a number of opportunities, but also a number of challenges. Tell me a little bit first about the motor that you're running in the Electrifier C. Well, we build a motor. It's very similar to what we use in the trike, 18 horsepower. Uh, DC permanent magnet motor. It's very efficient. Uh, it also works well as a generator, so we were able to incorporate uh, regen into the uh, design, so when you're descending or flying in lift, you can put some power back into the batteries. Not only do we have to deal with r available range in an airplane, but also the weight and the distribution of weight. How did you address that problem with the Electrifier C? To make the flight possible, we were already using uh, lithium ion polymer batteries which have the highest power density, the most power per weight, and that's what we need for anything flying, of course. So we were familiar with that, and uh, we were able to distribute the uh, battery power in the airplane to make the weight and balance come out exactly correct. We use uh, 78 pounds of battery packs. That includes the packaging and the wires and everything. Uh, and uh, actually, the overall weight came out, uh, because the old plane used some ballast, came out just about the same as the gas-powered version with with gasoline in it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. What is the current range that you're getting out of this aircraft in your testing? Yeah, the range is not much. Uh, it's uh, for sport flying. You want to go up and fly for an hour, so uh, we got a duration of an hour and a half. And I think they did a survey in Europe, and the average sport pilot flies 44 minutes per flight, or double of that if you want to go visit your friends or just fly around or just have some fun and come back. So we're within that range. What they were doing with the electric cars for many, many years, they were using lead-acid batteries. And if you ever just took your lead-acid battery, just your starter battery out of your car, I mean, it weighs like 75 pounds. So they had 1,000, 1,200 pounds of batteries, and they, and they only got very limited range because it doesn't hold very much energy. Um, lithium polymer holds four times the uh, rated energy per weight. In reality, because of the way they rate lead-acid batteries, it's more like ten times if you're going to use all the energy in an hour. So it's one-tenth the weight, which, which is what you need to make something fly. It's fair weather flying, no question about it. If it's minus 20, you can't charge the batteries. They won't accept the charge if you even damage them. Uh, and also, of course, any chemical reaction, the colder it is, the slower the reaction. So you can discharge your batteries when it's cold, but at a lower rate. You can't get as much power out of them, and you can't charge them at all. It's just the nature of them. So uh, it's for nice, nice flying weather. If it's, uh, I'd say the range that we use it in uh, is probably 40 or 50 degrees to whatever, 100 degrees. That's the range we can use it in. When we initially did the ultralight, uh, we sell those. We sell the ultralight. We sell the parts. Uh, you, know, you can get it complete with the wing ready to fly. This one, we wanted to see how it would work with a real airplane. Uh, so yes, this is, a, this is our prototype airplane, but uh, it's We've done all the development. It's, everything works great on it, um, but we don't sell them. People are asking me how much, you know. So we have in mind to uh, do a series-built uh, electric airplane, um, but the one we're going to do first, uh, it's going to take a little time. The first one we're going to do first is uh, two-place, which most people want anyway. But, it's, you know, it's a, it's a bigger project, more complicated project, so we're going to do it in uh, all composite airplane with all the nice features, uh, tri-gear, which most people like bigger electric motor, more batteries, but you'll be able to fly around with two people, we hope for two hours, hour and a half to two hours. Okay, we are cleared for our approach, have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV, and look, here comes the glide path. 
You're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WAS GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WAS gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navbase. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. The average airplane runs, uh, cruises at far more than its best L over D, its best natural speed. They push it way up because gasoline holds so much energy you can get away with that. With batteries, we can't. We run it just a little bit higher than the best L over D speed. Some of the LSAs that average uh, 100 and top speed, 132, whatever it is, uh, uh, really their, their natural uh, best L over D is around 80. So if you were powering that same plane with electric, you'd do it at 80. So this airplane flies at 70 miles an hour, which is close to its natural best speed. So you get the, the most distance per energy, which is what we need. One of the other big advantages is no vibration, nothing. And you don't even realize. We're so used to gasoline engines because that's what we've used our whole lives that we just forgive a lot about it because that's the way it is. But once you fly electric, you, you realize uh, you're missing you know, all, that, all that vibration. Uh, also, of course, the range is shorter. But for sport flying, if you want to go out and fly for an hour, hour and a half, uh, really no disadvantage at all. We'll be able to sell it as experimental as soon as we're finished because there's no government uh, problem with that. I'm hoping by the fall, but, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, the LSA uh, will be the next step. We're also working on another motor. Uh, we have a little bit of a motor program. We're uh, just finished a 50 horsepower motor that we're going to, we're testing, we're going to be testing. And then we're also going to be working on a 100 horsepower motor that, frankly, there's not enough battery power yet to run it. But we're going to have that ready um, for regular LSAs, which would be great. Like with a car, though, you can use the full 100 horsepower to take off, but you, don't, you can't leave it that way because you use the batteries too quickly, and you cut back. It's truly an electrifying concept, uh, pardon the pun. <laughs> Randall, I thank you very much for your time today with Aero TV, and good luck to you at the Electrifier C. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.